My name is Tom Jenkins and I'm the senior author on our recent paper published in Brain, Magnetic Resonance Spectroscopy Reveals Mitochondrial Dysfunction in Amyotrophic Lateral Sclerosis. My name is Matilde Sassani and I'm the first author. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis is one of the biggest areas of need in urology. It is a neurodegenerative disease characterised by the progressive loss of upper motor neurons and lower motor neurons, resulting in progressive weakness and paralysis, which causes this disease to be fatal. There are barriers to developing effective treatments. For instance, it is a heterogeneous condition and we don't fully understand how and why it develops in the first place. But there is good evidence from laboratory data and animal models that the mitochondria, which are the powerhouse of the cell, may be impaired, resulting in bioenergetic dysfunction. It would be very useful under these circumstances to be able to have a technique that allowed us to measure mitochondrial function in vivo in patients living with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Such technique could also be used in future clinical trials targeting specifically mitochondrial dysfunction. This is why we used 31 phosphorus magnetic resonance spectroscopy, which is an advanced imaging modality perceived by research participants exactly like a standard MRI scan. Phosphorus magnetic resonance spectroscopy allows direct measurement of chemicals which are crucial to energy metabolism. For example, here you can see a typical muscle spectrum you can see that there are three peaks on the right, which represent the alpha, beta and gamma phosphate of ATP, the energy currency of the cell. The large central resonance is the phosphocreatine peak. Phosphocreatine is the main energy buffer of the cell. We can also detect inorganic phosphate, which is one of the products of ATP hydrolysis, as well as phospholipids, anabolites and catabolites. This technique also allows calculation of pH, intracellular magnesium concentration, ADP concentration and Gibbs free energy of ATP hydrolysis. With our all useful measures we calculated to be able to have a comprehensive picture of the energy status in amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. We recruited 20 patients living with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and 10 age and gender matched healthy controls. We acquired phosphorus spectra from both motor regions of the brain and skeletal muscles. And we collected clinical data and neurophysiological parameters so that we could assess relevant correlates. What did we show? Well, in brain, we found that phosphocreatine levels were depleted in patients compared with healthy controls. And in muscle, we found that inorganic phosphate was elevated in patients compared with healthy controls both consistent with mitochondrial dysfunction occurring in these living patients. What would we do differently? Well, there are some limitations of a cross-sectional study. It would have been interesting to see whether we could test some disease controls as well to ensure what we're seeing is specific to ALS rather than to damage to the motor neurons in general it can occur in different processes. And lastly, our cohort of patients and controls was quite small, and this does need replication in bigger studies. The impact of the research is considerable in that it looks a promising tool to measure the effect of medications which can act on mitochondrial function. And there are various of these medications being developed in labs around the world, but showing target engagement is a really important first step to select the ones that look promising for clinical trials. And this is not just in motor neurone disease, but in other neurodegenerative diseases as well.